Hello everyone, Johnny Rose and Bully Boy Carter doing the JOB on a Monday. Uh, my choice, single wrestlers day, and I've chosen one man gang, a team, Crusher Broomfield, whatever you call him. Um, a big man that's been everywhere. He has been, like, absolutely very everywhere. Very entertaining. Um, he's always, strangely, he's always, like I used to have the Mo, Mo Eakin and fucking, you know, Welsh promoters called me one man gang for a little bit. And then I saw a shoot interview off that Hannibal TV and I look like him now. <laughs> He's 20 years older than me, mind, so it's a bit of a worry. Uh, <laughs> uh, his name is George Gray, February the 12th, 1960, from Spartanburg, South Carolina. Debuted in 77, so he's only 17. Uh, retired in 2009, so he was a, a 32 year run there. Mm. It's a long old stretch, isn't it? It is. Um, trained by Chief J Eagle, who's still fucking working today. Chief J Eagle, I know, uh, runs American Pro, Pro Wrestling, I think, in Carolina. He runs the same place every week. Right. Yeah, same venue every Saturday. Uh, he started there as Crusher Gray, locally, and then went to Kentucky and Tennessee and the like for the Poffos, where he became Crusher Broomfield. I wonder where they got the Broomfield name for. It's a fucking random name, isn't it? Broomfield. It is, isn't it? Uh, several NWA promotions after that, including Florida in 83 and 84, four where he t- uh, feuded with Dusty. So that must have been pretty fucking big, you know. Dusty in Florida in that period was mega. So uh, all Japan in 83 and 84 as well as Canada, Central States and Texas. 85 and 86 in world class, managed by Akbar. Um, he had two runs in Mid South, eighty two and eighty three, and eighty five and to eighty seven. Managed by Akbar again. He was UWF champion on the second run. Uh, May of eighty seven went to the WWF as the One Man Gang, managed by Slick. Uh, about eighteen months later, he became Akeem. Uh, like. I think it was a bit of a rib on Dusty, you know, like the African dream and the American dream and all that shit. I think it is. Like, I think everyone knows it is as well, to be fair, but not many people have, like, admitted it. But I uh, think it's clear, clear, it's clear to see, isn't it, really? Uh, uh, he was teamed with the big boss man until 90, where they did the split. There wasn't really the big blow-off there, was there? WrestleMania 6. No. Yeah, it was a bit shit, really, wasn't it? They should have, they could have done a lot. Yeah, yeah. WrestleMania 6, they were on with each other, weren't they? Yeah, it would have been 6, yeah. Yeah, but it didn't really come to anything, did it? No. Um, in 90, he did, when, when he left the WWF, he did one match in the USWA where he won a battle royal. Um, but probably like most in the USWA, they couldn't afford to live. Uh, WCW in 91 and again 95 to 96. He was US champion there. Uh, uh, 96 to 2000 on the Indies. 98 went for Japan for FMW. Oh, 91. He did global as well in um, Texas. 93, he was on, uh, sorry, 99, he was on Heroes of Wrestling against Abdullah the Butcher. Uh, 2000. To 2002, he did lots of indies, including the I Generation pay per view. It was run by Dennis Rodman, I think, in Australia. All right. Okay. On that. Uh, ECW in 98 and 99, briefly. He did a WWF dark match in 98. Yeah. Didn't know that. 2001, yeah. he was in the. Um, Gimmick Battle Royal of WrestleMania 17. Puerto Rico, 2000, 2001. And then returned to the Indies. Like, kind of quit in 01, but came back in... Sorry, kind of quit in 02. Kind of came back in 07 and 08 for, uh, to 09 in Indies, including Chikara. You know all that fucking monkey flippy madness? He yeah. did the Chikara trios match. In 2008, where he tagged with Demolition. Oh. So, fuck me, he's been everywhere, hasn't he? 
quite literally everywhere. Yeah. Banging. What you got first? Right, first, I've got one from ICW from the 80s. Yeah. Against Ernie Ladd. Okay. Um, Fruit Toast. From yeah. B&M. Fucking love that stuff. I get it myself from work. Pounds a load. Fucking beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. You get your discount, actually. I do, I do, yeah, 10%. Paid a full pound for this. You get yeah. that ninety p shit. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do two flavors. Well, what flavor is it? You get like the cinnamon oh, yeah, one. An orange one in there. Oh, the orange. Yeah, there's like an orange one and a cinnamon yeah. one. This is cinnamon. Yeah, raisin and cinnamon. I think. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Yeah, they're right. Nice toasted. Right. So oh, yeah. yeah. Um, I fucking wrote a lot down for this, but I can't remember yeah. too much. My about first pop out. My first one's a pop and I got like a whole page. Yeah. I love a match. Fucking all right. So, yeah, this one's against Only Lad. They've got um, fucking like, it's not like live commentary. It's like Only Lad talking over, like, right. but in character though. So, it's like, I think it's he's talking. Like, round about the time. It's not like years later where he's talking about it. It was literally like at the time, in character kind of thing. So, yeah, Ernie's talking over it. Um, right, see how we fucking see what... Yeah, so the start of the match, it's obviously two fucking massive dudes here. Because Ernie... And it's quite interesting as well, because when Ernie was talking, you know he's a fucking great talker. He made it so interesting. Like, you know, just like his voiceovers over, like, talking about the whole match, like, in character. It's fucking brilliant. Um, the match itself was was really enjoyable. So we start off with fucking two, um, yeah, two, two, yeah. So Ernie Lad runs into him, goes for a fucking shoulder tackle. Fucking one man gang just stands there, you know. Obviously, ain't gonna budge. Fucking Ernie Lad's like, all right, I'll fucking go on again, shall I? So he fucking runs, shoulder tackle again. Boom, nothing happens. And then the fucking third time. Ernie's running at him, fucking couldn't believe my organs. Fucking drop kick by one man gang, bam! It's like fucking drop Not kick, <laughs> like it was yeah. one of them fucking. Was, you was, are? was gang the baby face? Yeah, yeah, yeah. As, as Crusher Broomfield, yeah, yeah. So um, hits him with a drop kick, um, hammering away on Lad in the corner. Uh, the ref's fucking getting in the way, trying to get him out of the corner. Ernie gives him a cheap shot. It's hard to see, like, if Ernie had a fucking foreign object, because I couldn't tell from the fucking view, but he cuts him off just there and then in the corner. Um, and then gives gives fucking gang some heat here and there. Um, goes to ram him in the fucking buckle, blocks it. Uh, rams fucking Ernie in the into the buckle instead, does it a couple of times. Then one man gang's in control for a while, or Crusher Broomfield, as he's called here. Fucking uh, big boot by gang. Fucking gang's dominating now. Hits a leg drop for the two count. Hits a massive fucking big splash on the floor. But um, fucking Ernie Lad gets his foot on the ropes. Um, and then at this point, it's, it's kind of highlights because I didn't realise at the time that it was obviously like chopped up a little bit because at this point, like it cuts and like Ernie Lad's back in control, which was like, you know, quite weird because it was all fucking gang up until this point. And then, uh, yeah, then Lad's back in control. Um, they go and do the buckle thing again. Uh, yeah, again, he blocks it. Uh, well, he nails him once and then he blocks it again, but this time with his hands rather than his foot and he's just fucking like, Lad's trying to ram him into the corner, but he's like fucking got his hands on the fucking top rope, like blocking it, blocking it. Then fucking gang starts like hulking up like it's fucking Hulkamania, not taking shit from Lad. And Lad's fucking like backing off, backing off type of situation. And uh, where are we now? Yeah, um, Lad's striking him. Then fucking gang fucking nails him, nails him, nails him. Whips Lad off the ropes for a massive back body drop. Fucking hell. That's some beef line, isn't it? Um, lad, lad switches the whip into the corner. Fucking charges at gang. Gang moves. 
lad goes down on the ground and then uh, he hits another leg drop <clears throat> and then uh yeah he nails another leg drop and then there's a fucking another heel gets involved i don't know who the fuck he is though uh comes off top uh but gang catches in midair so like trying to fucking go up behind gang but gang notices him so Gang will catch him in midair for the bear. I don't know who this heel was, one of fucking lads' mates. And then fucking as he's caught him, lad just nails him from behind. Fucking it's all going on now. Then there's another heel up on the apron. I don't know who the fuck he is either. But um, fucking lad throws a punch. Uh, gang ducks it and gives him an atomic drop. Fucking crashes into the heel on the apron. Fucking then he gives him another atomic drop and he fucking goes out. So that's fucking lad over the top rope as well. And then there's a big schmoz, and I'm guessing it's a DQ because it kind of the action cuts out there, but it was all a big fucking fiasco and stuff. But it was enjoyable, and the crowd were fucking <coughs> crowd were right up for it. It was probably a, around about the ten minute mark, but probably a lot longer because they, you know, chopped it up a bit. But it was good, and I like I enjoy watching Ernie Lad as well because like not like the greatest in the ring, but fuck me, like so entertaining, like proper. You know, proper old school type of... I'd rather listen to the promos that lead into the matches than watching the matches. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah. that's the fucking I mean, job, isn't it? Like, you know, yeah. the promos come first, don't they, to fucking get the people there. <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. But, yeah, um, it was great. Do you know what I found funny is, in Poffo's ICW, Ronnie Garvin was there, and he was called the one-man gang Ronnie Garvin. All right, which I thought was right odd. You know, did the one man gang thing name come from Garvin, or was it one of fucking, you know, wherever he went to get the name? Maybe Texas. I don't know. It's odd, you know, wonder where it came from in the first place. Uh, yeah. So my my first one's Poffos ICW for the yeah. ICW World Championship versus Macho Man Randy Savage. Babyface Crusher Broomfield. Uh, Brenda Britton is with Matcha Man, who was Rip Rogers' manager as well. All uh, right. Lanny's doing the commentary here, yeah? but he's there in the studio doing it with whoever the normal commentator is. Okay. Saying about, because I don't know whether it was ever said that Randy and Lanny were brothers. Uh, no, but, I, I've I mean, always that. Obviously, Mouser would have fucking spouted out, but well, was it ever I, said, you know, I don't remember it being a thing on WF television when he was the genius or whatever. No, it definitely wasn't mentioned uh, then. No, I've never really, I've not even to this day, I've never fucking only like from shoot interviews and stuff like that. But on on camera and in character, I never yeah. ever, you no, know, it was never said. Oh. Um, so yeah, the commentators are on about the Matcha Man's million dollar robes, <laughs> fucking million dollar robes. <laughs> uh, the gang looked very different here, didn't he? Like, quite, you know, slimmer, still big, but slimmer, and moved well, and long hair, and all the rest of it. Uh, yeah. 60 minute time limit this match has got, but it's on TV, so chances of it being 60 minutes are very slim from the TV studio. And I fucking I love studio wrestling, I love it as well. That fucking brilliant, yeah, isn't it? Stuff. Fucking brilliant, yeah, love it, mate. It's because it's like a fucking small, intimate type crowd in it it's not like yeah. a widespread you know it's like they're all there everything all the eyes are on that fucking ring like you know what i mean it's a nice it's, yeah, good it's the shop window in it like the shop window isn't the whole shop but it's where you see what you want they right, lead yeah, you in yeah. the shop window by watching the shop window you know into the shop by watching yeah. the shop window you know like some people look at it and say well there's only fucking 30 people there now nah, you fucking you go on monday when they're at this place and you'll see you know, 10,000. They don't seem to get this fucking situation. Uh, right strong fucking luck up from the start and they're all over the fucking ring. Like, um, Savage is very cowardice, sort of like backing off all the time and he's in and out of the ring like a fucking booker's ass. Um, one man gang right out powers Savage like early on shitload of mat wrestling which i wasn't expecting from savage the fucking flyer and one man gang the beast um very believable sort of stiff looking fucking 
rolling on the mat kind of mat wrestling. Um, yeah, there's a lot of rolling around and fucking exchanges and takedowns and shit. Uh, Lanny talks about, during his commentary, Lanny's talking about an hour match that he had with Randy uh, last week. You know, at some fucking right. house show, I guess. Um, you know, saying that he would have won the world championship if I had the sleeper on and the time limit ran out, blah, blah, blah. And he spent saying that Randy spent most of the time out the, out the ring because he was too scared and, you know, this kind of shit. Right. And that was kind of the story that they were telling here, that Randy was getting in and out of the ring because he was trying to back off from the gang. And Randy hadn't defended his bout in shit loads of time because he was fucking backing away from people and all this kind of stuff. Um, there was a right good fucking right eye cross body from the gang at one point, which you don't expect from this fucking beast. Like you said earlier about his drop kick, you don't expect a fucking big fucking Bosch cross body. <laughs> um, gang's on top of the action for most of it. Uh, Savage fucking keeps powder in. Uh, gang with a headlock. Savage cuts him off with a fucking eyeballs. Savage misses like a fucking big corner charge. Gang's got the heat on again. Uh, there's like a headbutt by the matcher man and a headbutt by fucking gang and then one from the matcher man. It's all very. I say it was all gang, but it was very, it was kind of even because every time Savage kind of cut him off, he kept himself alive. It, it was like, uh, you know, like villain heat and then the baby face tries to come back, but it was the villain doing the coming back. So right. it was like, it was like watching it with gang being a villain, but not cheating. Yeah, Savage was the baby face situation, yeah. with, you know, doing the selling doing the cheating um yeah. big fuck off gut wrench from the gang shitload of stuff on the arm they start fucking clubbing the fuck out of each other there's like 20 minutes gone at this point it's a long old match um match a man to the middle rope misses an elbow gang throws him out the ring sorry gang goes out the ring randy off the top with his fucking double axe um rope break saves the gang then and then I'm on to my next page. Right long match. Um, one man gang with a slam. Bosh. Leg drop. Bosh. Rope save. Savage this time. We're 20 minutes in now. Big fuck off brawl then. It's all happening. Fucking punches and kicks flying on both parts. Uh, match a man tries to suplex him. Bear in mind, right? I've put match a man with a suplex on this 400 pound one man gang. Earlier on, about five minutes in, he tried to slam, but he couldn't do it. When now we're 20 minutes in, and he's suplexing him. I'm not an expert, but it doesn't make any fucking sense. Two count there. Ed, but gang misses a splash. Match him up, misses a knee. Fucking gang into the shoulder, uh, shoulder first into the fucking post. Um... There's a right rough looking fucking pile driver. It's very you know, like exchanging moves at this point, like you know what I mean? And there was no build up to the finish. It was just fucking a rough ass looking pile driver on the gang and, and Savage's own. Still the ICW World Heavyweight Champion. Probably to this day. Yeah. Uh, there we go. Hey. What's next? My next one. Let me find it. Where? Next one is uh uwf title match against big bubba oh okay and um i think it might actually be on the mid-south dvd that wwe released because i've seen this match before i'm sure i had um whether it's on that dvd or not i'm sure it is but anyway so we'll go into the match fucking strong tie up around the ring fucking Literally like, all around the ring, like all around the ropes, and everything. Fucking, they finally <laughs> break. That's some fucking, fucking beef in this match, isn't there? <laughs> fucking, there is. Fucking Bubba was huge at this point. Fuck me. Um, tackled by gang. No one budges. Fucking, uh, same situation as the lad thing. Uh, fucking goes for it again. Fucking tackled by gang. Boom. Nothing's happening. Fucking gang's heel here. So Bubba's like the face. 
Um, tie up again. Gang attempts a slam on Bubba. Ain't happening. Fucking go into another tie up. This time Bubba attempts a slam. Nah, ain't happening. Fucking then they go back to squaring off against each other. Tie up and a rake in the eyes by a gang. Starts the heat on Bubba. Boom. Fucking got him in the corner. Bubba switches the whip. Bubba runs in. Uh, runs uh, out. Hang on. Well, yeah, runs at gang in the corner, but gang moves. Then uh, um, Bubba takes a fucking hell of a hell of a. Oh, you know them? See him do that over the top fucking shenanigans when he runs into the corner and there's no one there and he literally fucking ends up going over the top rope. Like, but in, out like, in like the corner. Like Slaughter used to do that fucking front yeah, one, yeah. didn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fucking, and it's always the big guys that do that. It's fucking yeah. looks so so good. So Bob Typhoon over the did one in, um, in the tag thing we watched the other day. You said Typhoon did something like that, didn't you? Was it Typhoon yeah. or Quake? Wouldn't it? I think it was Earthquake. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, Bubba goes over the top. Then they're brawling outside. Fucking Bubba's fighting back outside, and the crowd are fucking exploding. Really, really lively crowd for this one. Uh, they go back inside. Fucking gangs down. Bubba's in control. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a pretty cool uh, fucking little s- spot here. So, fucking Bubba's, he's got fucking gang on the ropes, like fucking draped over the top rope, but like he's in the ring, so he's facing outside the ring, right? Fucking Bubba comes off the fucking top and, uh, like the ga- gang just like moves out of the way, so he literally like fucking hangs himself on the top rope. You know what I mean? Like fucking beautiful it was though. He's li- you, know, you know how you're choking someone on the top rope as they're fucking, and Bubba's just left him there, and fucking Bubba climbs up. He jumps off for- just to give him a fucking axe handle or something on the back of the neck as he's draped over the top rope, and he just moves out of the way and fucking hangs himself on the top rope. Looked fucking really good, especially for a big guy like Bubba coming off the top like that fucker. You know, uh, where the fuck are we now? Hang on. Oh, yeah. Then fucking next thing I know, there's a fucking, uh, fucking Inzaguri by Bubba. Fucking straight out. Oh. <laughs> fucking drop kick from gang earlier. Fucking Inzaguri from Bubba now. It's all going down. Really? Um, uh, then they go back outside. And I wrote here as well, like it's a fucking proper main event. Feel like it feels like a main event this match it's like gang gangs busted open on the outside we've got fucking akbar joining the action now but like fuck those he must have got to the arena late or something because he comes in halfway through the fucking match like <laughs> he's having a shit <laughs> <laughs> but like there's no explanation as to why like he's late so we didn't come down for a running he's like coming down just to fucking stand in the corner like, you know, so he must have just been like, oh, shit, I'm going to be out there. I'm fucking <laughs> <off."> <laughs> so I don't know why he fucking came in like 10 minutes late. But yeah, um, <laughs> fucking gangs tied up in the ropes as Bubba's fucking nailing him. It's back and forth now, back and forth, fucking all over the place. Um, where are we? Oh, yeah, uh, Bubba fucking gang whips Bubba off the ropes. Um, and fucking, yeah, gang whips Bubba off the ropes and gives him a fucking hell of like a fucking, I, I, I'm not sure who it, I've wrote here, whips Bubba off the ropes. So I'm guessing it's the gang fucking forearm. But he la- nails him with a forearm and it fucking sounded like a fucking shotgun going off. It was literally like, um, there ain't no fucking gimmicks needed in this fucker. He literally just fucking drilled him. And I, I was like, fuck it now. Just a massive thud. It was like, ooh, fucking hell. And this Strong. is before the days of the leg slappers. I know, there weren't a leg slap in sight here. No leg slapping, no gimmicking. It was literally just fucking flesh. Well, or bone, it was something. But fuck me, it made a noise. Um, <laughs> um, gang, yeah, gang goes up. Yeah, it must have been gang that nailed him. So yeah, gang nailed him. And then he goes to the middle rope. Uh, fucking Bubba moves. I thought it was going to be a DQ finish here. So I was going to be a little bit disappointed because Bubba moves out the way. Um, so Gang's now fucking on the, like, on the mat, KO'd. 
Um, and then the ref's there, but fucking Bubba like throws him on the ground. He's like, oh, he's going to fucking DQ him. But he didn't. He just fucking, I think he just told him, it, gave him a stern telling off. So then he fucking, and then gang's still down. Bubba comes off the top with a massive splash with a one, two, three. But it was a fucking brilliant match, though. Absolutely fantastic. I loved it. Fucking did. Oh, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. My next one is for the WWF World Heavyweight Championship. Um, from Saturday night's main event it's either April or May of 1988 versus the Macho Man Randy Savage (laughs) (laughs) here we go here we go Uh, (laughs) it's the evolution of of both One Man Gang and Macho Man because this is like this is going to be five years after the first one and I thought the first one wasn't the greatest so I'll see how how this one gets on I was going to mention Earlier, actually, when you were watching that one, I was going to say they had a fucking they had one a few years later. I was actually going to bring up, but here we go. You've just brought up. Yeah. They did uh, WrestleMania four. Yeah, that's the one I was going to mention. Actually, yeah, yeah. Um, but this one's from Saturday Night's main event, so you know, just after. Apparently, it's the first title defense, like Savage's first title defense. All right, on TV at least. Anyway. Um, <clears throat> Lock up, one man gang swings, fucking misses, savage attacks him, bish bash bosh, crossbody, one man gang just gives way, bosh, one two, out the ring he goes, fuck this. Um, there's a fucking top rope crossbody from Savage. It's all fucking like this shit's getting laid in here. Um, <clears throat> loads of quick pin attempts like right early on from Savage one man gang cuts him off Slick gets involved outside the ring doing the choking and all that kind of shizzle I love Slick I think he's fucking brilliant oh, yeah. <clears throat> um, Savage ducks the line oh the, this is brilliant so gang's doing the choking on the ropes Slick gets involved Savage pulls himself up all knackered off the ropes he goes, ducks the line from the gang. Instead of hitting the ropes the other side, Savage just like slides straight out of the ring and he's right behind fucking Slick to give him the fucking clock. It was brilliant, really good. <clears throat> um, like, you know, perfectly timed and positioned and everything. Um, yeah. Slick runs round the ring, gets in the ring the other side. Savage comes out after it, comes in after him and gang clocks him. Um, big elbow from the gang. Gang misses the charge into the corner. Savage is up, misses the elbow. Clothesline from the gang, out the ring goes Savage. No, sorry. Match a man, it's the elbow. And clotheslines gang out the ring. Up goes Savage for the top rope, fucking out the ring, double ammo gimmick. Um, and accidentally on the way, he clocks the fucking cameraman because the camera goes flying. <laughs> um, back in, match a man on top. <clears throat> uh, gets cut off again. One man gang to the middle, but he misses the splash. Slick is now round with Elizabeth. Fucking giving yeah. him the old charm. Um, fucking big man. Big man about town. Um, match a man sees Slick. Pokes his head through, fucking gang cuts him off. The big lift and the choke thing. The referee is now with Liz, checking Liz is all right after the traumatic experience of getting chatted up by Slick. Slick throws the cane, sorry, Slick with the cane, swings at Savage, gets gang, elbow off the top, home. Good and very good. Oh, yeah. and not, uh, like both the managers were involved. It, it, but not too much, do you know what I mean? And, you know, right place, right time. Good, good mm. shit. Cool. So, match number three, I've got the uh, African Dream, good old uh, Akeem against the Blue Blazer in January Beautiful. 89. So, um, this there's quite a few funny. I'll, I'll, I'll mention the fucking... <laughs> The funny bits before we actually talk about the match. So, fucking 
this is Akeem, bear in mind. Fucking, it feels like half the crowd are chanting one man gang <laughs> throughout the fucking, <laughs> throughout the fucking match. You can hear it. You can hear like, there's a part of the match, they're all chanting, Akeem sucks. But I think they're the younger, the younger fans. And I think um, you've got a fucking bunch of Dave Meltzers there chanting fucking, um, yeah, chanting one man gang. And it's quite, uh, quite, you could easily tell out, you know, make out what they're saying. And also, as fucking the Blue Blazers come into the ring, there's like a massive fucking Owen Hart sign. And this <laughs> was, this was, this was 89. And um, it's quite funny because it's got like, it spells out Owen and then each letter, like, it will say O and it will say something like maybe outstanding. I can't remember, you know, but it just basically spelled out Owen. And then at the bottom, it said like heart across the bottom. And like the, the announcers were like, they even acknowledged it, but didn't acknowledge the Owen part. They're like, yeah, the blue blazer is full of heart or something like that. <laughs> so like, fucking, you know, they shouldn't have just said anything. But yeah, um, it was quite funny, actually. I was, would this have been one of them smart towns like, you know, New York or Boston or whatever? It, this was at the Philly Spectrum. Mm. So there we go. Know. Jim Cornette's always on about how fucking smart the Philly crowd were, and you know, like yeah. they they cheer the villains and fucking because the Midnight Express were over there where they were fucking villains. The rest of the places, yeah, yeah and it's fucking ECW town, isn't it? So it's probably these fans probably went on to become fucking ECW loyal, fucking whatever. But anyway, yeah. So right on to the match. Um, it's actually quite even this match. I thought fucking Blazer would have been a bit squashed or at least, you know, fairly one-sided. But nah, uh, Akeem goes to tie up a couple of times. Owen fucking rolls under him. Um, Akeem gets him on the ropes eventually, attempts to shoot uh, shoot him off. But Oh, yeah, so he's got him on the ropes doing the old choking thing, you know, on the top rope. And then, you know, the spot where you're fucking pull the rope back and they take a back bump kind of thing. He'd done that on Blazer, but he'd done the fucking backflip, you know, from it. So he didn't like bump it. Then the backflip runs into Akeem, fucking goes for a fucking shoulder tackle. He ain't going to budge him, is he? Akeem just stands still. Um, does it again, fucking, uh, then goes down the second time. Then they do a knuckle lock. Um, Akeem fucking forces the blazer to bridge down and blazer gets back up fucking goes down again then he does the old backwards roll you know from the knuckle lock where you kind of reverse it on him type of situation so he's doing that on on akeem um working the wrist and the arm is a pretty good uh good match to be fair uh like blazer's doing a load of like arm work and wrist locks and stuff like that working on the arm um he does the bit where he takes him. He takes Akeem to the edge of the ring, and fucking Blaze will have his arm over the top rope, then jump down to the floor. You know what I mean? Like wrenching the fucking arm a bit, staying on his arm. Uh, let's see what we got now? Fucking yeah, he does it a couple of times actually. Then um, point where Blaze who comes off the top rope with a fucking double axe handle, but pretty clever. He just goes for the fucking shoulder rather than the fucking noggin. Like, just, like, on the arm. He's all fucking... All blazer on the arm, to be honest. Um, he goes back on the arm with, like, an arm bar, then gets irate uh, to get back in control for Akeem. Whips blazer off. Fucking... Ducks blazer's... Uh, yeah, whips blazer... Ducks blazer's clothesline, then, then catches a... Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. So, um... Fucking, he whips Blue Blazer off the ropes, throws a line, then catches Blazer's crossbody, gives him a backbreaker, then goes into heat. So the fucking shine at the start, or at least all that arm work, took fucking ages. Finally gets into the heat. Uh, Blazer avoids a big splash in the corner, and then nails Akeem, gives him the ten punches, fucking drop kick. Then he, go yeah, he gives him ten punches, he staggers, gives him a drop kick. Then Blazer goes to the top rope. Drop kick for a two count. And then the finish was pretty decent, actually. Fucking, he goes up to the top again, the blue blazer. He goes for like a crossbody, and Akeem just fucking sidesteps it. It's a hell of a bump to take. 
fucking splat on the floor and then Hakeem runs and hits the big massive splash for the three count. But it was a very even match. Like it was all Owen at the start and then Hakeem towards the end. Hakeem uh, selling is fucking brilliant, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's fucking... He is very good. Like and it, one of the big men that don't really get talked about much. But no. I, I'm a fan of One Man Gang. But Hakeem, I could fucking... I could watch all day. You know, I'm all about the gimmick, me and fucking the dancing and the fucking whoa and the I fucking love it. And love I think it. Slick, Slick was the perfect guy for him as well. I think like yeah. just that fucking because he's fucking basically a white Slick, any really, but fucking well, yeah, a lot bigger. Like yeah. you know, it was a perfect match the pair of them, but a, a, a gimmick that people take the piss out of. But it was fucking enjoyable as hell. To be fair, fucking with me. Love it. That's that's why my next one is my favourite because it's the one Hakeem match I've done. And out of all these these three, four, sorry. Um, this one's my favourite. Seventh of October eighty eight. From wow. Paris, France. For the WWF championship, Akeem versus the Macho Man Randy Savage. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's been a while since I've watched one of them ones. Here we go. <laughs> uh Timmy White, the referee. And Gorilla uh, and Bobby. Doing the commentary. Uh, oh, so yeah, he hasn't long been Akeem here already. This is October of eighty eight. So okay. you know, it's fucking in April he was he was one man gang at WrestleMania. So not long. There's women coming to the ring with cards like they did in the you know in all the matches at that at that Paris show. You know, I've seen the Rockers and the Rougeos and that kind of thing and. I think it's Brett and, and Dino Bravo. There's women with cards with the name of the wrestler on. All right. The woman with the card has got one man gang on the card. Um, All right. So it could have been one of them. It was booked that far in advance that fucking the cards were made, you know. Uh, Liz would match a man, but there's no slick. Uh, so it can't be the same finish as the last match. Um, brilliant fucking... Akeem fucking lock up, punches Savage, does the dance. Like, I think this is very much a different match to the last one when it could have been exactly the same. But it's a totally different crowd, isn't it? This is in Paris. So it's that, that and I know it's on TV, but it was on TV in that in Paris, I guess, or, you know, French TV. So, um, you know, it's very much that house show. Like the Rockers and the Rougeos was in London, that was very much a house show match. Where right, they yeah. wouldn't have talked about dancing and fucking nip up shit. Yeah. On TV. So there was a shed load more dancing and shit going on in this than there would have been any other, which I'd pop for even more. So yeah, there's a punch and then a dance. Fucking brilliant. Best gang's ever been. <clears throat> Lock up all around the ring like the la- like just like the last one. Akeem misses the swing. Savage is all over him. Crossbody catch, cut off, heat. Um, Matcha Man's always firing up. Sends Akeem to the corner, met with a boot. Akeem with a huge atomic drop, like fucking holds him up there for what seems like forever. Like just fucking, just he's there. Um, a big long, uh, longer heat the second time round. Um, suplex, bear rug. Savage fires out, <clears throat> cut off, leg drop. Um, even though there's a big E, like the last one, Savage is always alive, always firing up. Um, the next time he fires up, does a big, like, fucking kind of bulldog thing where he puts, a, you know, Akeem's head in the mat. <clears throat> one man gang kicks out of the pin attempt, out the ring goes Savage. Savage cuts him off somehow up to the top. Uh, match a man off the top, but he's met with a fucking fist of the woman. Well, okay, bosh, have that. Um, puts one man gang in the tree. Uh, sorry, puts match a man in like, the tree away. Fuck knows what, he, what he's going to do when he's there. I was thinking that while he was doing it. What possibly is fucking Akeem going to do with him when he's upside down? The referee's trying to get him back and he fucking just throws the referee out of the ring. Disqualification. 
the the match was great. The finish was shit. Uh, yeah. If I would have had the last match's finish in this match, it would have been fucking perfect. But it just, it was just like everything was going peachy. There was no need for Keen to get disqualified. <coughs> you know, yeah. Savage beating Hakeem at that point wouldn't have fucking hurt anybody, would it? Mm. You know. But, you know, it was right. My favourite out of the four. Oh. Yeah, that was your third one, wasn't it? Well, last one. No, it's my third one. Yeah, sorry. Your last one, though, isn't it? Fucking hell. When I tell you what this one is, you'll think, fuck me. What are you making me fucking listen to here? But I'll tell you, it it, it kind of was the worst one of the four, but it wasn't anywhere near as shit as I thought it was going to be. So anyway, this one was on the 18th of February, 96. It was actually my 13th birthday. <laughs> here we go. And it was uh, WCW Worldwide against Conan. Okay, now. I know. So, um, talking Conan. You are. Never thought we'd be talking Conan. <laughs> Funny thing is, I liked him in '98 because I was a fucking what? I was about 15, 16 or something. I was fucking loving him in '98, '99. But you know, was this US yeah. title? Yeah. Yeah, because I think I remember this from uh, TV at the time. Yeah, so um, there was no fucking... Nothing made sense in this match to me. Like... like None of Conan's wrestling makes sense. Well, that's the thing. I always, I always remember fucking... Land, you know that fucking uh, kick that he does? Like It's like a fucking kick. It'll kick you like in the guts, but with like his heel. So it's like a back kick, you know what I mean? And um, he says, whenever fucking Lance Storm was talking, he says, whenever Conan done that, every time he'd kick you in the bollocks. Like, literally, just like he couldn't, like, every time he'd, he'd be like, fucking hell, not again. But, like, anyway, so, uh, yeah, Conan's in the mask as well here. He's like, not like full mask, but, you know, he's got like some sort of head situation going on. So the so very he's first. Like, jazzy pink outfits and, you know, tassels mm. and shit, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jeans and you know, gangster. Yeah, I preferred him as a gangster, you know me to be fair, but um well, you know yeah, that, that fits your uh fits your image. <laughs> <laughs> so the very first move of the match, there they are, fucking face to face. First move of the match is a drop kick to the knee by Conan on gang, which you know would make sense because he's a big dude, so he wants to keep him down. But like first move of the match, and then as soon as he does it. He just whips him off the ropes. Fucking, yeah, whips Gang off the ropes. He sleeps. Then he gives him a drop to old. Gang goes down. Then he runs over his back. Second rope drop kick. Fucking whips Gang. Does his rolling clothesline. You know, the roly-poly, which I never understood, like, what that's about. But he does Surely it. Surely you lose momentum off a clothesline whilst you're rolling. You do, don't you? Not and like, help in any way. Because you're focusing more more on actually getting up to do the clothesline than yeah. you are clobbering someone. So from a shoot point of view, it's a lot of bollocks. And by the time he's fucking up on his feet, sometimes the fucking guys almost ran past him because he's fucking, you know, he, he's not going to slow down the guy fucking running. Like, so yeah. yeah. He's not going to speed up because that's not what he does. Nice. <laughs> so he does the rolling clothesline anyway. Gangs on the ropes. Um... There's a there's a pretty cool spot where Gang's like against the ropes and he does a I say a cool spot it's a bit of a fucking dangerous spot to be fair but Gang's on the ropes and Conan runs and gives him a crossbody like and they end up both going through the top and middle to the outside you know what I mean so um but then like all of a sudden so it's a move by Conan that's this is the weird thing Gang's in the ropes Conan runs and does the crossbody. So it's all Conan, like he's the uh, offensor here. And then next thing, they're outside the ring and gang's in control. I'm like, what did I miss? Like, you mm. know, it's fucking, they both went through the ropes. So um, next thing I know, fucking gang's back in the ring. Conan does the old fucking Prince Nassim over the top, you know, the flip to get in the ring. But it's a pretty uh, cool little thing, this, because gang's in the ring. I don't know, like, I mean, it looked all right from where I was. 
Conan does the flip over the top rope, but as he does it, he nails Gang like on the head with like an axe kick type situation. You know what I mean? Right. So I'm not sure. It's either a really innovative type spot or Gang was just in the way. But either way, <laughs> <laughs> either way, he caught I him on the. I wouldn't fancy. Um, I wouldn't fancy taking that to be fair because there's not really a way you can control your feet. When they're both in the air, is there? There's no yeah. sort of. It's coming down like a fucking axe kick on right on the dome, and um, so yeah, I don't know. Maybe he was just in the way, and because yeah, but, yeah, it looked it looked good, but I don't know because Gang didn't sell it all that well. So I thought maybe he thought fucking now, what was that like, you know? But um, anyway, there's arm work going back at Gang's back in control, uh, leg drop and by gang heat fucking conan fights out the corner a couple spin kicks which look a bit fucking not very good to be fair gang goes down conan for oh there's a good spot here but conan's the face now this is as fucking heelish as you can get so gang's in the corner like fucking facing like out the ring right so like chest first in the corner conan like steps up the ropes behind him so, as Conan stepping up the ropes and Gang's face, you know, in the corner, Conan gets his boot and fucking, like, Gang's face is against the top turnbuckle. So, as his face is against the top turnbuckle, Conan gets his fucking boot and literally just, literally squashing Gang's head in the corner with his boot, you know what I mean, as he's there. And I'm thinking, it's a really cool move. I don't even think I've seen that before, to be honest. But it looked really cool, but like it's as heelish as you can fucking get, really, isn't it? Like it's not really a facey type move, but Conan's doing it. And I thought, fucking wrong, that looks all right, that. Like I thought about trying it, but then I thought, I've got to climb up the fucking ropes, and I'm not sure I want to do that. So, <laughs> so I might do on the bottom rope, you know. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, uh, which I thought that was a pretty cool little spot, to be fair. Um, uh, yeah, it's a bit back and forth at this point. Fucking whips gang to the ropes. Uh, uh, yeah, whips gang to the ropes. Goes for a fucking backdrop on gang, but big forearm to the back from fucking gang. Gives him a slam, elbow drop, then misses a second rope splash. Conan with a somersault, like, off the... Uh... So as gang's getting up, Conan's on the top ropes and does, like, the old fucking... You know, like the cannonball from the top, the somersault, yeah. and just kind of connects. Yeah, so he lands, lands back first on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As as like gangs standing up, um, and that was the finish. I've put at the end of it okay-ish because there was some pretty decent stuff in there, but there was some total fucking bizarro type stuff as well, to be honest. But um, yeah, I, I didn't. Think, I first saw Conan like. Around that time, I guess, on Triple A. Right, okay. I enjoyed him then, but he always had good people around him. You know, like he had fucking Art Barr and Andy Guerrero and Luis Bacoli and shit around him as a team. Right, okay. Triple A's fucking eight man tags and all that most of the time, isn't it? So he always had somebody fucking strong around him. But I've never been a fan of Conan on his own. No, um, no, I mean, I, like I say, I liked him in 98 because I was like kind of into the wolf pack and all that malarkey. So as a character, I thought he was all right. But wrestling wise, um, I yeah, I kind of feel a bit guilty of ever really enjoying his matches, to be fair, because I watch them. <laughs> yeah, just keep it to yourself. <laughs> uh, my last one, after watching um, ICW Randy Savage, WBF. Randy Savage against the gang, WF, Randy Savage against Akeem. I've decided to watch Global Wrestling Federation 3rd of October 91 against the Patriot <laughs> because I couldn't find any more Randy Savages. I no. wanted to watch One Man Gang against Randy from WCW and I thought that must have happened. It, I can't yeah. find one. No. Must have happened. It must have, mustn't it? They fucking wrestled because I thought I could stick to the Hogan and. Uh, you know, Hogan Savage team. So I, I thought yeah. Hogan and One Man Gang in WCW, I could do that. And then I thought, no, I'll do the Patriot because how am I to know it's not Randy Savage under that mask? It's not to know, am I? You know. Uh, join the match in progress. 
one man gang uh, tries to put Patriot's head in the corner, it gets blocked. Fucking Ingo's uh, one man gang. There's not a lot to this match, but it was pretty good. <clears throat> um, one man gang takes a fucking huge bump after them buckles. Uh, one man gang was fucking great here, different kind of look. He had like a red top on. Right. Rather than, you know, WF, he was sort of uh, like a, a gloomier, sort of dark with the schools and shit on the side. But these are right. like a like a shiny red top and shinier tights. Black All tights. Right. You know, a really good look. The best gang look I've ever seen. Um, heat on a Patriot. Dal Wilkes a Patriot, not, um, not the Tom Brandy one. Shit loads of uh, back and back and neck sort of working on them areas. Big fuck off neck voice for a while. Um, I've written twice actually. It's the best the gang's ever looked because he was fucking, you know, he was talking during this bit, like this long sort of slow old, but he was talking all the way through it and fucking jaw jacking and all shit. Um, anyway, misses a shoulder charge at some point. Patriot with the fire. Line, line, drop kick. Line, you know, two lines staggers the gang. Drop kick bumps him. Um, Patriot sends the gang off the rope, ducks his back for a backdrop, but gets clobbered. Um, Patriot with a kick. Uh, Patriot sells the fuck out of it. The referee sort of looks at the gang. Um, right, this is quite hard to explain. Okay. Um, so the Patriot kicks the gang in the corner, right? He's, the gang's in the corner. The Patriot kicks him. Uh, you know, he's, he's, he's kicking him. He's getting his fucking fire on the gang. The referee's trying to get the Patriot back. And just as the Patriot's about to do the kick, gang reaches for the referee and brings the referee in. So it's the referee that takes Patriot's kick. All right, okay. It's pretty cool, to be fair, but you've got to be in the right place at the right time. James Beer's the referee, like, you know, legendary Texas referee. Um, so kind of the referee gets the kick and squashed at the same time. Uh, the referee's dead. So there's all kinds of fucking shitloads of fire from Patriot. When the referee wakes up, he disqualifies um, the gang for doing it. Uh I think it was Lee, it was like North American Championship Tournament or something, but I think Patriot ended up winning. Um, right. And I suppose instead of just beating the gang that's four hundred pound clean, it was a good, you know, it was a good finish. You know, mm. but you have to have the fucking referee in the right place. It'd be fucking yeah. hard to do. But yeah, it was good. I like the Patriot. I've always liked the Patriot. Mm. I like I like the old, uh, but I like a mass man. Yeah, I like a mask man as well, to be fair. Um, I like a good mask gimmick. A lot of people think they're mainly villains, don't they? Like a mask baby face. It's been more of newer times. Like the Patriot, really. When you think of old mask men, you know, like the, the older generation, they're normally villains, aren't they? Yeah, you know, yeah. You're, and you're fucking... But, no, a good mask baby face is always going to be over, I think. Kids like that shit. Yeah. Um, right. Well, you couldn't have a fucking baby face in a black mask. You know, like, the assassins are never going to be fucking baby faces of the year. But, <laughs> you know, without the Rey Mysterio fucking kind of jazzy masks. Over. Yeah. I always like a, I like a baby face masked guy that's like not, you don't really get him that often now, but you know, that's fucking, when you were, you just assume that a baby face in a mask is a high flyer. It's good yeah. that you, you know what I mean? But it's good to, like, fucking get one that's not. Like, you know what well, I mean? I suppose to a degree, even the Patriot was, because he did that shoulder block thing, didn't he? Which, this is 91, you know, that Patriot missile or whatever they called it. I think he still did it in the WWF. Which, what year was that? 97? 96, 97 yeah. when he was? Yeah, yeah, 97, yeah. I mean... Even then, that was pretty high flying. Yeah. You know? But anything off the fucking ropes was high flying then, to be fair, wasn't it? It was, wasn't it? Fucking Randy Savage was a high flyer, weren't it, really, if yeah. you think about it? But, yeah. you know, not by today's standards, but. 
fucking. Um, I was listening to some podcasting yesterday. I can't remember who it was. Or no, I think it could have been just been like watching, you know, one of those watch along kind of things. Oh yeah. yeah. Nowadays, the you know, forty two of these things will be done in one match when here it's such a fucking you know like fucking wow spot. You know, it's, it's, it's a fucking lost art, isn't it? This is what it is. Yeah, that's the all man gang. Very much enjoyable. Uh, yeah, the theme match with Savage was my favourite. What was yours? Um, I reckon I really like the Only Lad one, like from way back. That was yeah, a lot. Of, it was a lot of fun. Um, but actually, no, I'll say probably the Bubba one was the best of the lot. Yeah, that was a fucking proper main event. Yeah, but the first three were all enjoyable. But the yeah, definitely the Bubba one. I'd say for the title. Yeah, definitely. Cool beans. Wednesday for Portland. Portland. See people then. Hello, we're back. This is like one of those PSs in a letter. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we've got to choose Bully Boy singles pick for next week. I think I was just worried about the time. It was 56 minutes. I was like, fucking hell. Um, so, yeah, Bully Boy, next week, next Monday, who you picked? Off my singles, yeah. I'm going to go. You'll fucking love this one. I'm going with Ted DiBiase. That's a fine pick. <laughs> Isn't and it? And lots of places to go. Do you know, I saw one from, uh, I think, uh, yesterday, from like 1978, but it was in the WF. And it was oh. him, and, uh, him and Pat Patterson. All right. Yeah. I might have seen that, you know. That rings Beautiful a bell. Thing. Beautiful thing. Yeah, lots of places to go. Yeah. And uh, I've been watching him in Japan as well. Oh, yeah. It's big him over and, there. Uh, him and Pete Roberts tagged in Japan. I understand Anson, but Pete Roberts is from the same, well, not from the same town, but lived in the same town I grew up. Mm. So, yeah, sweet. Um, Ted, it is next Monday. We'll try again. See you later. <laughs>